You recall I mentioned I was going to use two tanks. One tank here for the vegetable oil. I'll use the factory tank for the diesel fuel. I know some of you are going to say, well, Kit, you don't need two tanks. You can run it on one tank. And that's true. I've run these conversions on one tank. But there are a couple things you need to be aware of if you're going to do that. One thing you need to learn right away, if you're running waste cooking oil or straight vegetable oil, there's no free lunch. This isn't free. I mean, you may be able to get the oil for free, but it's not like everything's going to be just wonderful 30,000 miles down the road and you're not going to have to do any maintenance. That is false. Do not believe that when you hear it. So the main reason I am using two tanks is because I want to be able to flush the system with diesel fuel after I've run it on vegetable oil. I do not plan to use this as a daily driver, by the way. If you're driving one of these every day, it's your daily commuter, you can run on one tank because you never let it sit long enough for the vegetable oil to congeal. Have any of you ever tried to clean up vegetable oil that you spilled on the ground, come back 30 days later, and try to clean it. And just imagine if that's happening inside your injection pump, inside your injectors, and you will get coking. I guarantee it because there's glycerin. This is not biodiesel. This is straight vegetable oil. There's glycerin in there. And when it combusts inside the combustion chamber, it will coke. It will coat the pre-chambers and it will coke up the tips of the fuel injectors. So I recommend, you know, if you're running straight vegetable oil on one tank system, you may have to do a little more maintenance. Make sure you pull those out maybe every 24,000 miles, clean everything up. But because I'm not driving this every day, and it's probably going to be parked at times for over a month, then I've decided I want a two-tank system. It gives me the option to run on either vegetable oil or diesel. And if I am running on vegetable oil, and I know I'm going to park the car and let it sit for a week or more, I can switch over diesel and completely flush the system. Straight vegetable oil. Yes, we're talking about straight vegetable oil. This is not biodiesel. This is not diluted vegetable oil. Right now, the very first thing I want to do is focus on the fuel tank installation. I want to make sure that this tank is going to work. And I'm going to try today to determine what type of fuel pump I'm going to need. You have to have a fuel pump back here at the tank in the rear of the car to push that thick vegetable oil up to the engine compartment. You cannot count on the lift pump on the engine to provide enough strength to kind of pull that old thick oil, particularly if the temperature is cold outside. This pump right here that's on this, you know, weed sprayer tank is rated at one gallon per minute. So that's not a problem. But the big problem is it's rated at 60 PSI. The pressure is too high. The pump's not designed for heavy liquid. So this pump isn't going to work. It's just too much pressure for the fuel injection pump in these old diesel engines. This type of tank I've not used before. I've welded up aluminum tanks in the past to go in the trunk. A couple reasons I like this tank is number one, the size of the opening. The ease with which you can get in here and even clean it out, plus it has this big screen. So when I pour the vegetable oil, here is a secondary filter. So I like the wide neck opening on this tank. The other thing is the tank's not heavy. I'm going to make this tank so it can be removed. Let's say I'm going on a long trip. I need the trunk space. I don't need the vegetable oil. I'm going to have this so I can quickly remove the fuel tank from the car. And if you're curious, I should mention that this is a 15 gallon tank by Chapin. Notice here they offer the tank in 15 and 25 gallons. You know, you could go with 25 gallons, but 15 is plenty enough for most applications in these old diesels. Most of you realize, I don't want to put this pump in there and get everything hooked up and find out the pump can't deliver. So this is an old Walbro electric pump that I've had around the shop, puts out about eight to 10 PSI. And I decided right off the bat that I did not want to use 5 16 inch hose. I wanted to go with 3 8 hose. We did a little test earlier, I didn't film this, but you definitely get better flow out of 3 8 inch hose. And of course, this is going up to the engine compartment running 12 feet. So definitely we're going with 3 8 We have 3 8 hose on the pickup. We have 3 8 hose coming out here. Now I want to see what kind of flow rate we get. Oh yeah, look at that. 
Now that's plenty of flow rate. I took the Walbro pump, made an L bracket, and mounted it right on the top of the tank. And what I've got here is 14 feet. 14 feet of 3 8 inch hose. I wanted to see what the flow rate would be through 14 feet of 3 8 inch hose. Remember, you're going to get some line loss here because of the friction. And I think you'll see that the flow rate here is probably not quite as much as when you saw it just pumping earlier. I'm going to turn it on. Take a look there. See that flow rate? That's more than adequate. The engine is not going to be burning that much fuel. So now we have to find a way to route the fuel hose in this wiring harness that we're going to use to power the pump up to the engine compartment. There's no way around it. You're going to have to drill a hole somewhere in the trunk area. And this is the area I recommend right here. This was the groove that the electrical cable for the 280, which had a pump in the rear that ran through. I recommend you drill a pilot hole first to make sure you're in a good location. Now notice I haven't put a grommet in there, but before I finish the installation, I will wrap this whole area with uh, high quality zip tape to provide protection for the hose and the wire. So now I'll take you under the car and show you the routing we used up to the engine compartment. There's the hole that I showed you earlier up inside the trunk. We're routing the 3 8 fuel hose in this wire bundle, which is two strands of 16 gauge wire. And we're going to run these right down here and go on top of the sway bar. You're going to have to be a little careful because you got some problems if you get this rubbing on sway bar, trailing arm, axles, and so on. So you can see I run over the top and then I come underneath here and zip tie it to the brake line. So to keep it up high over this axle, you can see I've zip tied it off to the brake line and then I come over and I'm going to start following the factory fuel lines. And then right here, I have to go over the top of this subframe. You can't go underneath because you're going to get too low and possibly have interference problems with the control arms. It was a little hard. I fed it from the other end first. I fed it up through and over the top of the control arm up into the tank. And then I took the rest of it and moved it forward. So once I've come over the top of this subframe, I'm just going to follow this bundle of factory fuel hard lines using zip ties and coming underneath and taking the hose and the wire and zip tying it all along here, all the way until we get up front here and approach the engine compartment. So here is where the fuel hose ended up. I left the wire long. We'll wait until we get the wiring fuse panel set up up in here. And so this is just gonna be set aside. 